welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast, starring in in Agneg order. Uh, we got <laughs> we got uh, we got Frosty. We got a uh, Ramrod. Was it Ramrod? Ram Scoop. Ram Scoop. <laughs> Ram Scoop. <laughs> We got a regulation guy. We got Gooch Pooch and yours truly, T Bone. Uh, welcome to the podcast. You are called a comment lever or a regulation listener. That's the introductions out of the way. Hello, everyone. God Hello. help anyone who made this the first episode they tried. <laughs> <laughs> are you good at scooping ice cream, Kevin? As a Ram Scoop, I feel like that's your thing. Like, that's your move. You're a scooper guy. I actually don't. I've never been one. I've never owned a scooper. I've always just done a like a dessert spoon and had some mm. really messy sort of like ice cream chunks instead really? of neat balls. Have you bent a lot of spoons over the course of your life doing that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should really get an ice cream scooper. I feel like as Ram Scoop, that, that's kind of part of your thing. Oh, that's a great idea. And you get the fun little button. You hit the button. It's great. The ice cream comes I out. I wonder what the most premium ice cream sco- You know how you can get those sort mm. of over-engineered cork removers, the, the electric ones where- Yes. Mm. You just hit a button and it kind of does all the work. I wonder if there's a completely automated ice cream scooper. You know what there should be? What would make it even better? Because um, I've seen ice cream scoops, by the way, I don't know about you guys. I've used them a lot in my life. A lot of times they don't fucking work. Like if the ice cream is f- frozen, it's still hard as yeah. dicks to get ice cream out. So one tip I've learned over the years that I think <laughs> you know my grandpa probably taught me or something is you like run the scoop over under hot water for a little while. So it like heats it up. So then yeah. it goes into the ice cream a little bit easier. It'd be cool if you could get an overly technologically advanced one that also has a heating element in it. Mm. Ooh. There are ice cream scoops. I'm looking them up. I'm looking at a couple different ones, like Williams Sonoma type stuff, where um it's taking like the heat from your hand to like heat up the rest of the spoon to cut through oh, the great. ice cream. It's it's again, heat conductive liquid in the handle takes advantage of the natural warmth of your hand to facilitate smooth scooping and provide easy release. I don't know if I want to pay to have something use my own heat. Like I made that heat. What am I paying for? <laughs> you you're paying to have access to that heat in new and exciting ways. <laughs> I shove my fingers into the ice cream. Please don't it do that. <laughs> does feel kind of like Kickstarter scammy, the idea of like, you heat the spoon. Look at this innovation. <laughs> Look, I want to come over to your house and I want ice cream and I want it to be easily taken out of the ice cream container and I don't want your fingers all over it. So <laughs> if you can conduct your heat in a more uh, sanitary what way. What if I shove my hand up a, up a plastic bag <laughs> and then shove my fingers in? That I'm fine with. I don't think that would work well. I think that'd be terrible. Ice cream gloves. You would be ice cream gloves. fine with that? Yeah. That's yeah. Sanitary. I want I want ice cream. All right. We need to invent ice cream gloves. I want a <laughs> glove that is made with the same material as those hand warmers. So I'll put my hand in. It activates, goes really hard and rigid, and then I'll do the scooping. I, okay. Huh? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you lost me with the rigid part. You're, you want your hand to go rigid? Well, I'm just thinking of, you know, those things that, you know, those little pouches that are liquid and you squeeze them and they go all hard, but hot. <laughs> what? Have you ever used one? They use like this, like their little activated hand warmer. What's, yeah, oh, the, little, yeah. the hand yeah, warmers yeah, yeah. we have are always like little packs and you like break them up and it like activates yeah. rust and nickel or something or metal. And then that's what heats it up. I wouldn't want to put that in ice cream. But that'd be inside the inner walls of the glove. What are, what's the outer walls of the glove? Something this hygienic. Is not a, this is not a something hygienic. This is not a reusable product. No. Oh, these are like condoms. This is like a one and done. Oh okay. no, no, no. Okay. You you like put them in the microwave to reset them. Oh, I see, I see, I see. We're talking about two different kinds of hand warmers. Okay. I'm talking yes. about the ones that, that you yes. know when you like get that like uh, water below freezing and then suddenly it freezes and you see it like creeping through. It's like the opposite of that in a hand yeah, warmer. Yeah, yeah. There's something really funny about imagining you saying who wants some ice cream as you throw your glove into the microwave. <laughs> Meanwhile, other guy with just spoon is doing fine. Already has two bowls worth. Like, I don't know, with the efficiency. Yeah, but he bent two spoons in the process. Process and they'll yeah. never be oh, straight the right the way again. He's using his heat. <laughs> I take my glove out of the drawer, act, put my hand in, hit the button, and then go, ah! as my hand goes completely solid and hot, and then I dunk it in ice cream tubs. <laughs> now that's a party trick. It's like a fucking Spartan armor lock. 
Yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. And I activate my gel layer. Stand back. Ram scoops working. <laughs> ice cream flies everywhere. And then he scoops the ice cream. He yeah. rams his hand in and then scoops out the ice cream. <laughs> it's so fucking literal. <laughs> I have a question. What are we talking about? We're talking about ice cream scoops. <laughs> you're, you're I'll ram, tell you what we're talking about. We're scoop. talking about products that we will not make. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I was thinking you want to do the fruit gloves. This sounds like maybe an attachment of that and, and not to oh. tease the f- future does it do. Well, let's put ice cream gloves straight behind fruit gloves as things we'll never make. Which are uh, the fruit gloves are under my desk right now. I just have to. <laughs> I'm never going to make those things. You can test uh. it in the future. We have something coming up. There is a product <sighs> that might work. Why do you ask about scooping? Well, because Ram Scoop. Your name Ram Scoop. And that, that's it? Yeah. How are you feeling, by the way, this week? Uh, a little bit better. Still, still kind of terrible, but a little bit better. Get any of those pills, or are you still in the Gatorade? I there's no point. Like you have to, I guess, take the pills within like the first five days for them to work. No point in taking medicine. Well, for those specifically. Hmm. Do you, are you still testing positive? I tested negative for the first time yesterday. So. Hey, congratulations! Yeah. Nice. A little bit of a progress, but I'm having a. Do you guys? Do you guys listen to things to fall asleep? Is that a thing that works for you? Yeah. No, that's fair. Do you have now when you listen to something, Gavin, does it have to be specific or can it be like anything? How do you make your choice on what you listen to? If it's not designed to make me fall asleep, I can listen to it. If it's like one of those sleep things or people talking like they're trying to put you to sleep, it just it doesn't work for me. That's fair. I'd rather listen to like a video about a nuclear accident. Really? That specifically? Yeah. Something that's like mildly interesting. I'm like, oh, yeah, I could get into this. And then I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> so you want something that's like surface level interesting, but it's really a trap. and It's actually boring. That's like the ideal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got to con myself into falling asleep. I guess maybe I could try that. It's got to sneak up on you. I need a narrative typically when I fall asleep. So I like I really enjoy rain sounds because I can craft like a thing in my head of like, oh, it's just raining outside and I'm comfortable and it's raining. You pick one of the few things that doesn't have a narrative. Well, no, for myself. For myself, I need to establish a narrative in which I'm hearing the sound, or else it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Have you considered being awake all day and then doing stuff all day, and then at the very end, when it's at the end of the day, after you've eaten and you've put on your jammies and you've brushed <laughs> your teeth, and it's like late at night, and you're tired, just going into a dark room, laying into a comfortable bed, and then turning, closing your eyes and just turning off? I've tried that. Typically that works. Yeah, you've just described everything in the day up to the point where my brain just starts thinking about everything and going <laughs> yeah. completely apeshit. Gavin's thinking about fucking ice cream gloves and he can't turn it off. It's because you're not using your brain enough in the day. Yeah? It's got, too much, it's got too much end of day energy because it's been idle for too long. You gotta, you gotta engage with your brain more early on. You need brain reps. That's what you need. Oh. Yeah, hey, idiot. Start start thinking a little bit more fucking dipshit. Come on. I wanna try that. Think harder earlier and you'll tire your brain out. That's think, a great idea. Think harder <laughs> earlier. Wake up. That's why Jeff is writing down his thoughts. Wake up, think so fucking hard it makes you tired, and then just yeah. coast through the rest of your day. I'm gonna make it so that when I wake up, I bang my head on a Sudoku and I just have to get started. <laughs> <laughs> There's at least one point in almost every day uh, where I go, I am thinking way too hard about this. I need a break. And it's always <laughs> face related. That's shocking. <laughs> of all things. That's all, the f- is all I think about, dude. Even like on a Sunday? Uh, no, I said almost every day, not every day. Although, okay. I don't know about you guys, but face is kind of a 365, oh, 24-7 sure. kind of a thing for me. It's just of all, yeah, the, that's unfortunate. all the shows to <laughs> claim that you think too much. Too much thinking about. Yeah. That's just the only one I care about. The problem for me, like, so there some people like train noises. My problem is when I hear train noises in my head, I'm now in the train. And I'm thinking about well, where am I going? And there's nowhere I really want to go in the train <laughs> and it just becomes uncomfortable and then I can't relax because it's an issue of like, I don't want to actually be here. Like the sounds, that's what I meant by narrative. I need to craft like where I am. Why am I hearing this for it to work? <laughs> am I on the wrong train? <laughs> exactly. Why, why am I going here? What's the, I've never, I've never traveled by train. Why would I choose to choose by train? Is there food on this train? What if that was the sounds of a fictional vehicle? Oh, that would be... What are we talking like? What what type of fiction are we thinking? Are we from like a flying car? 
something underwater. Uh, a magic school bus or something. Oh, magic. You know what? I think the magic school bus could work. I think I would find that relaxing. <laughs> that might solve my problem. I don't know if that exists, but I've encountered an issue. So with me not being able to breathe, one of the only places I've been able to sleep is my bathtub. So I've been sleeping in the bath quite a bit. <sighs> and I decided for the first time to mix the rain noises <laughs> with the bathtub which has been very effective, but it is causing <laughs> me it's causing me several problems. I keep waking up in complete terror that I have flooded the bathroom. I will wake up to loud water like splashing everywhere and there is a solid 10 <laughs> seconds of panic that I have completely flooded my living space. You're an idiot. You 4DX to a sleeping situation. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. And it's, it's a real problem, so that's why I was asking. I was hoping for maybe an alternative, find a different sound that would narratively work for me, but not make me How think. How about instead of sound? Have you ever tried to like read in bed? That puts me to sleep if I am having trouble. But I'm in the tub, once again, remember, Jeff. So right, I feel like right. that's a dangerous tub, game with a book. Reading in the tub is dangerous to you? Oh, yeah, well, because if I'm trying to fall asleep, yeah. It's not great okay. for the book. <laughs> it's not great for the book. How do you get around the, the grip problem? What do you mean the grip problem? I feel like when you're sleeping, you're kind of you're shuffling around to get comfortable. And I feel like all you would hear is like, as your skin is like hitting the tub. <laughs> oh, I, I don't, I, I get like, we talked about this before. I cork in, I cork up. Yeah. Get the water going a nice temperature. <laughs> then uh, I, I drift off. He's pretty in there. Like, I think it's pretty solid. Yeah, it's, it's good. There are no concerns. <laughs> Remember, he's got that, he's got that weird shaped bathtub. I do. It's annoying. Yeah, he, he dams it up. But I've genuinely, like, four or five times in the last few days, I've woken up in complete terror, thinking that I've flooded everything. Well, do you have the, the overflow drain, though? Uh, yeah, but it, the water goes over it. <laughs> <laughs> Easily. I did learn, I learned at one point that if you leave it at the highest <laughs> amount, it drains just fast enough to go over, but not above the tub. So you can safely run it at full, full forever, technically. But you do run out of water. Oh, it's like an infinity pool. It is. Yeah, so, what's, so what are you scared of? Well, because if you... Oh, my, my tub is really stupid. If you turn... The full power <laughs> isn't cranked all the way. All the way is as hot as it can get, but it's not the most volume it can pour. Mm. So if you have mm. it in the middle, it's middle temperature and also shooting faster. And if you do it there, it will overflow. <laughs> Undeniably. <laughs> That makes sense. So the only way to not overflow is to sear your skin. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's maybe the only way. I did I almost had an overflow situation where there was like there's like a piece of plastic or something in the tub. I don't remember what was in the tub. Maybe it was paper got in the tub and it partially clogged the auto drain. And I realized I was like, ah, oh, it's making some weird noises. And then I turned the light on on my phone and the water was like on the edge. That was terrifying. It's a real Mission Impossible. <laughs> so how many hours are you getting at a time? At most, like, an hour and a half, I'd say. Okay. Since for, like, a, over a week now, right? For over a week, yeah. And it's not getting, it's not getting much better? It's, it's improving, but it's not great. And what does the tub give you that the bed doesn't? It locks me up. It, it corks me in an upright <laughs> position. <laughs> Just... Do you think you could accomplish this with more pillows? Like you've like if you went from eight to twelve or sixteen? Well, no, because as Gavin said, there is some shuffling typically mm. to get comfortable. And as I shuffle the the situated Oh, you know what you need? What do I need? You need sleep spaghetti. I need I was thinking about that the other day. You need to bur <laughs> you need to burrow into a little nest of sleep spaghetti and it will it will cradle and comfort you and you won't have to move. I don't think there's any cradling or comfort with sleep spaghetti. Oh, it's amazing. Could we just get a ring of plastic that represents the top of your bathtub and just put that on the bed just to like keep you in i'm imagining uh, like when you uh when you like cut a I don't cookie think that would work. you want you want all of <laughs> no i don't no i don't think so because it's the the that's not the part the bed moves the bed adjusts but it would keep you corked no it won't because <laughs> i don't think it, because eventually the bed pushes away from the wall okay <laughs> how about this how about that seems like effort too we have all the tools already in your apartment, I think. What if you just got in the bathtub without putting water in it and threw a blanket over you? I don't, I guess, yeah, that would solve the, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried about flooding. You wouldn't have to worry about the flooding. 
you'd be in the sleepable position, and then you just add some, you know, throw a pillow I'll and try a blankie that. in there and stuff. I already have a pillow in there. It's all, that's already set. I do, I just need a problem. There you go. Problem solved. Easy. Okay. I'll try that. <laughs> I appreciate going through this ridiculous exercise. Thank you, uh, dude. I I want you to sleep more than an hour and a half a night. You do that for too long, and you're gonna lose your fucking mind. I'm pretty sure if I came over, I could get you tucked in in bed in a way that gives you all the benefits of the bath, but you don't absorb water. I think you have no idea what you're talking about. No, I think Gavin's got a point. Sometimes yeah. getting tucked, tucked in is awesome. I yeah, agree. It, there needs to be a service for people that, wa- are, that want to be tucked in, professionally tucked in. I could tuck you in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with the tucking part. I get, I get anxious about the tuck. Because once I've been tucked, you just, I would feel bad if I untucked. Yeah, but you're a guy who likes to be corked. You would love to be tucked. And yeah. if I'm there to re-tuck you... That's what I was going. I mm-hmm. was going to say, like, this is a situation where if there was a, just a person, very uncomfortable. But if Gavin comes over, tucks Andrew in, and then stays with him all night in <laughs> case he gets untucked and then retucks him, I think that that's a great idea. Now, are you enforcing the tuck? Am I, do I have to remain tucked? Or do I have, uh, do I have free will here? Can I get up? You want to remain tucked. Yeah, no, but my brain, my brain gets chaotic and would want for the worst. But you're tucked in the bathtub. What are you talking about? You're just you as like tucked to be in corked. the bathtub. No, I understand. Yeah. But I'm saying that in a scenario in which there's somebody there to tuck me, my brain is immediately going to go, well, I'm just not going to be tucked. I'm going to fight this tucking as much as possible. I'm just well, going to be that's as difficult <laughs> as I can. You got to... You gotta th- you gotta deal with you then. That's oh, that's yeah, absolutely. Sounds like you're inviting me over to wrestle. No, I don't. I'm not gonna wrestle. I'm just gonna sneak out of okay. that tuck a little bit. It's like it's a, there's a difference between like wanting help sleeping and then being combative about getting help sleeping. No, you're the most defiant sleeper. I yeah. Well, it's not sleeping necessarily. It's just like oh oh, you're gonna make me tucked. I gotta be tucked. Okay, we'll see about that. We'll see how tucked I am. That's like if I brought you lunch and you're like, oh, you want me to eat? And you just kick it out the window. Like, what do yeah, you I'll, sh- I'll show you how fucking hungry I am. <laughs> if we were in our paranoid era of this show, that is how I would have reacted. For sure. I wouldn't trust lunch from you. So you wouldn't be able to just for one night, relax, let me tuck you in, let me make you try and feel corked in a bed, and then maybe uh, just keep an eye on it all night. I think it would be the worst night of sleep of my life. Easily. <laughs> I think I would be so uncomfortable. And then I wouldn't want to move. Realistically, I wouldn't move. And I'd just be miserable the entire night. Well, I would I would be, as I'm tucking you in, I'd be wanting feedback. I'd be like, how's that feel? How's it feel on the legs? Is your back supported? <laughs> but how you feel in one moment is not how you're going to feel several moments down the road, potentially. Well, that's why I'm there for. I'm there all night. But you don't have that option when you're corked in the tub. Like, once you're set, you're set. So I don't know why it has to be different in the bed. Just because Gavin did it? I, yeah, I guess, I don't know, I'd feel like there'd be a weird social pressure, wanting Gavin to feel like he did a good job. I feel like this isn't a sleep issue, it's a, it's a you and me issue now. It could, yeah, I think it would be a person issue at that point. Huh. Uh, I guess I'm disqualified. How about your mom? Do you trust your, do you trust your mom to tuck you in? No, I don't think there's anyone. (laughs) I don't think there's any person that I'd be Dude, I would let my mom tuck me in. She's, my mom was good at tucking me in. Dude, that's the best person that could tuck you in. The The best. But it's what type of are we talking like a standard? I'm very specific as well. I don't like the sheets under the bed. I need the sheets loose. You know, like you know, like sheets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They need to be. You gotta have those. Feet you don't like a um, under mattress tuck. No, and I feel like that's part of the standard tuck experience. The default. The t- I could customize the tuck experience to whatever you want. That's the point. No, I understand. Yeah, I just I don't think it would work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I, t- I just don't know why you have to shit on his idea before we even try it. He's giving no, you I'm, the option of ultimate tuck flexibility here. I don't I don't respectfully as well to you get because it's a very kind <laughs> offer. I don't think you know how to tuck very well. I don't trust your uh, tucking abilities. Ah, uh, you're full of shit. Well, now you're attacking Gavin. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch you. I'm gonna say get in the bath. Fall asleep in the bath. I'm gonna watch everything no, you no, do no. in the bath. I'm gonna watch what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to replicate that. I'm going to order supplies. I'm going to replicate that the next night in the bed. And you're going to be, you're going to feel like you're in the bath, but you'll be able to go all night. I think, I think you're going to look at me in the bed and immediately go, I'm not qualified for this. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. This is more complex than I realized. I just don't know. <laughs> look, clearly I'm not using my brain enough in the day, right? I'm too awake at night. <laughs> yeah. If I put, if I put all of my effort into getting you tucked, I think I'd sleep soundly. <laughs> <laughs> that that yes yes you would i bet you would sleep better than i would <laughs> this is actually a solution if you have sleep issues maybe this is the only way to get both of you a good night's sleep 
<laughs> the thing is, the, the immediate issue I have with all this is that if I'm going to get any sleep, I'm going to have to sleep on his floor, which I assume is completely filthy, disgusting, crumbs, no. hair. No, no. no. Of, we, de- no. we determined that Andrew's quite no. clean. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> when we saw, we saw pictures of his apartment and we were like, oh, it's so much cleaner it's than we thought. It was clean. really clean. Yeah. Yeah. There are times, listen, I will knock over a thing and I'll trip over a sushi container, but it, it's not going to live there. <laughs> did you see the AI pictures somebody did of Jesus throughout the eras? And they had Jesus <laughs> no. slipping. It was on the <laughs> face subreddit. They had Jesus slipping on uh, Andrew's uh, <laughs> sushi container. <laughs> no, Eric, I'd love can, to see Eric, it. can you find that and throw it in the chat? Yeah, I'll see if I can find it. Thanks. That's great. It's in that. It's not that there's a there's a thread that has like 10 photos in it and like you can scroll through and then in the comments is that one, that specific one, because they forgot to include it. I just before I'm finding these, I'm, I'm looking right now, but I just want to point out, I said it in the chat that uh, this is the episode where the most could probably be taken out of context and just put into like, oh, yeah, drops anything sticking or, out for you. Yeah, just I mean, when you're you talking go all night, you said that, yeah, that that, that flagged in my head. Yeah, I'll get you in the bed, and then, oh, right. and then you won't know what to do with me in the bath. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna study. I'm gonna study what you do in the bathtub. Yeah, uh, should we have? Should we make that the preview for next week? Yeah, really. <laughs> out of context. <laughs> uh, I just want to point out somebody removed the topic uh, from the subreddit. It was deemed uh, too far off topic. Oh, I'm that's, just, that's. I'm just letting you know. That's so. That, sad. that moderator is out of control. Just saying. Well, anyway, there's a picture out there somewhere of Jesus slipping on Andrew's sushi container, and it looks. You'll probably be able to see it in the comments for this one because yeah. I'm sure they're they're going to be eager to put it back in and be like, "Ha ha, told you so." How is it? How is Jesus slipping on sushi too far away from this? Where else would that be used? <laughs> probably in the Bible. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I would think it's either here or the Bible, like yeah. the Bible, like 2023 edition. <laughs> you're not a big Jesus Falls subreddit user. It's not. It's not one of your go-to places. <laughs> I've. Uh, I realized earlier that um, I sent some totally non-ironic pictures as a part of a work conversation yesterday, and uh, and I looked at it again. And I was like, "How is this work? What do you mean?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the audience, it's uh, pictures of the thrice to meet you prototype and the smashed remote control from Gavin's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> because they wanted to know how big they were. So I was like, well, for the f- face museum, I, I, a part of me, I went all out because a part of me was like, goob, I don't know, it, one is the length of an Apple TV remote and the other is the length of two gloves. But then I thought I'll go all out and I'll, I'll do it properly. Oh, that's great. It did make me really happy to read that email because they asked for measurements on things like the rock that you guys dug up <laughs> for the beanhole video. Like the idea that the rock needs to be measured is so funny. I know. I and I gotta fucking go out and I gotta take pictures of it too. Just get, uh, send him the video. I was I was so busy. <laughs> Here's a thirty minute video. Figure it out. I was so busy today taking photos of other shit that I'm pushing that off till next week. So you've been working hard on uh, recipe book photography. Yeah, we missed you. We thought you were going to show up because you expressed interest uh, at Laser Tag, but you did not show up. But just fine. That would have been uh, it would have been, it would have been talent heavy at that point. At Laser Tag? Oh yeah, we went to Laser Tag for Gavin's birthday. Oh sh- shit! That was That's great. Amazing. I didn't invite you, Andrew, because uh, you know you won't set foot in this country. But I would have loved to have had you there. That's not that's not true. Second of all. I initially felt bad that I missed your birthday, and that's gone. That fool. <laughs> I got blasted on the field first. Uh, when was your birthday? Uh, the, sa- the same day as it is every year. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was recent. That's rough. I wrote it last episode because I like the way it looks written down. You did? <laughs> oh my, well, that's not fair in defense to me. I was deep in COVID at that point. 23rd of May. It's May 23rd. I'm a Gemini edger. Yeah. <laughs> Out of context does a lot. You did a lot to work with this episode. Uh, that's really fucking funny. 
Uh, but yeah, today we filmed, we did the pr product photography for Andrew's Coffee for the Regulation Pizza, which I'm really, oh, no. really excited <laughs> oh, about the no. way we did that. Uh, Gavin's Cold Cheese Sandwich we shot. <laughs> we shot the uh, Andrew's Desk Grilled Cheese. We shot the Regulation Bagel. We shot Andrew's Hash Brown Mash, which is one of the grossest things I've ever made, and boiled peanuts. <laughs> oh, God. We just have the, the oh, condiments no. and the Purple Nightmare left to film. We just didn't get to it today. It was a lot. So, so you had to make all these? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I had to make them look made, right? So the yeah. the, the peanuts didn't have to be the peanuts didn't have to be boiled for seven hours. They got boiled for like three. And did you follow the instructions to my cheese sandwich as I wrote them, or did you just? I, I, you can ask Eric to annoying detail. I had <laughs> I have the cookbook up on my laptop, and I was using. I Mark mentioned to him many times. Boy, it's really convenient to have all these recipes right here in a cookbook when I'm trying to make them. <laughs> He did. We, it was so thorough that as he was reading it out loud, Millie kept looking at me and like rolling her eyes. <laughs> it was just the excruciating detail of making a cold sandwich that was just cheese and Branston pickle. It was great. It was, it was really something. I'm so excited to see it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, they look great. They look like, the photos are incredible. They're awesome. Yeah, I didn't. I uh, I've realized that my life just doesn't function now unless there's a calendar invite for it. I just had no idea that was happening today, even though you told me about it. <laughs> well, I don't know. What so, to say about sorry that. about that, man. I I apologize. <laughs> no, I'm. This is me. Apo I'm sorry. I'm. Next, I'm worthless. I'll, I'll make sure. I'll make sure that we <laughs> have worthless. invites going forward. <laughs> I, I will say there was an invite on the calendar for me and Jeff, so I can't. I I can't knock you for that. So I. Okay. I I'll just make sure you're on it next time. Here's a little preview oh. of. Uh, oh no! <laughs> oh wow! What is that? It's that's red sauce sort of like, with a pepperoni slice in it. Looks like a cocktail. Yeah, it does look a little bit like a cocktail. Uh, we got creative with how we presented a lot of the ingredients. We decided <laughs> instead of showing you what a boring old regulation pizza looks like, we'll show you the before photo. <laughs> And then what? you can take your own after we're photo gonna, and, we, and kind yeah. of put it in there. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a box like an open box on the page. It's like insert your own after photo here. <laughs> I would be so mad if I bought a cookbook and I every every photo was just the ingredients and not actually what it looks like. Which is a it. fucking joke we came up with at the grocery store when we were walking around. I think. Oh, <laughs> when I was like, I don't want to cook a full fucking full pizza today. I feel like we. have We've been on fire with like the suddenness of like coming up with ideas recently. Yeah. It's been really good. Yeah, Eric and I have a really good idea for a piece of supplemental content we want to do with you guys uh, that we came up with yesterday while we were doing the break show. Did you go shopping together today? You were at a supermarket? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. He came by at 11. We went to HEB and then we bought all the <laughs> ingredients. I'd printed out, I'd made a list of everything I thought we needed. And then we came oh. home earlier. That I got up about 7 a.m. to start all this. So I had to go to the storage facility to get the lighting kits and everything and get it all set up. I had to borrow Millie's camera. It wasn't charged. I had to charge it. Didn't have a, didn't have a card in it. So I had to go buy an SD card. Uh, it was. I'm devastated because yeah. this would have been a great day for Stuart to show up after a long day. Yeah, Stuart would have had a ball. He would have had a fucking ball. <laughs> Eric and I. Eric and I, first off, we're great. We're very uh, we're hardworking dudes. We are not great at shopping at a grocery store. We, I was telling him, Ugh. I wish I could see a heat map of us going back and forth to the grocery <laughs> store trying to find stuff. We went to both sides three times. It was like, it's, it was bad. It was, and the whole time we're going, I hate grocery shopping. It's it HEB <laughs> has, has an app. It tells you exactly where everything is. Oh, I don't have, I didn't know HEB had I, I an app that tells you I wasn't you aware of that, that either. I had no yeah. idea. Where the huh. fuck were you at 11.30 when we needed the app? <laughs> well, you guys clearly didn't want Stuart around, so you didn't put the calendar invite in. <laughs> Dude, the other day I was walking, I must have heat mapped like the same place six times looking for some Old Bay spice or something. And then I looked in the app and it told me exactly where it was. That's exactly where it was. It's Dude, incredible. The hardest thing for us to find today, I think, was cranberry sauce. Yep. Oh. Really? So do you have more to do? Yeah, I have to. I'm gonna cook everybody's. I'm gonna make everybody's condiments. There are five because Eric, Eric didn't make one during the contest, but I had it. He made one later, so I'm gonna make all the condiments. I'm gonna make the purple nightmare, and then I have Gavin's holiday stuffing, and that's it. Everything else, like I said, hmm. is uh, is made, or we're gonna use uh, like stock photography, stock or photography, or or, oh, okay. or or art. You know, like have Tobin or Michelle or somebody draw something. So when are you doing the rest? I'll probably do it Monday or something. Oh. Need a hand? Uh, yeah, I would love a hand. I would love a hand. I would love for you to see what I'm going to do with your condiment. Yeah, that'd be great. 
you gonna <laughs> you gonna take a picture of it on the bottom of your foot? <laughs> it's, we'll see. I I got some ideas. That okay. whole sequence, out of context, is incredible. There's just so much you could do with all that. This is a great out of context episode. <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's so important to find time for yourself in a week. Like, I, I know for me personally, it's something I'm not always the best at, but I have learned uh, through a lot of experience that it is so easy to burn yourself out. And I'm somebody that I really struggle when people around me are maybe struggling themselves um, and I feel an obligation to be there for them. But if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not putting yourself in a position to give them the best support and care that they need, which they deserve. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. It's just such a, a difficult process to sort through, uh, and it's so important to be mindful of those situations. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Therapy is such a, an important process to go through. I have found it to be extremely helpful in my life. I had all sorts of um, issues I had to work through and just progress on and create systems for, whether it be anxiety or just other things I faced growing up. I think it's such an important process to go through, and I would highly recommend that anyone go through it or at least give it a try. Uh, I think it's a, a wonderful thing to do. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com face today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash face. Hey everyone, we wanted to take a moment to remind you that RTX 2023 is happening this July 7th through July 9th. Join us this summer for a memorable weekend at our Camp for Indoor Kids, featuring 15-plus live shows, special meet-and-greets, exclusive parties, fun panels, and much more, with guests ranging from your favorite RT groups like Funhouse and Achievement Hunter to friends like Therapy Gecko, the Super Carlin Bros, and new rock stars. RTX 2023 is an event you won't want to miss. Badges for this three-day fun fest are available for as low as $55. Thanks for listening to us get very excited about RTX. We're looking forward to meeting all of you there, so head on over to www.rtxaustin.com to get more information about the event and buy your badge. Can I, can I tell you guys two really quick stupid, stupid stories? Yeah, of, of course. Dumb things I did. I think even though I haven't had COVID for a bit now, and I didn't have it for very long, and I never really got that sick, I think I still have COVID fog on my brain. Because last night, Emily and I went to bed and we were going to watch episode, Succession. And I realized it's the first time I've tried to use the H Max, HBO Max, Max since the fucking flip over thing. Uh -huh. And so I, I click <laughs> on the app and it takes me to the store, like the apps, the Apple store to download the new version of the app. And it asked me to put in my username and my password, my like HBO username and password. And so I do. And it's one of those auto-generated ones. And for some reason, my, I, my there's a problem with my iPhone where it won't connect to CarPlay and it won't connect to TVs anymore. Uh, so I can't ever like do it on my phone. And so I'm like painstakingly typing this password and it's, I just can't, it's like 30 <laughs> characters and I just can't yeah. get it. And so eventually I have, I switch it all over and have Emily download it all and then try to do it on her phone and copy and paste the password. And it's not working. It's not working. So then I go and I reset the password. And I'm able to log in on my phone just fine. It's just the fucking TV app won't work. I can log into the app on my phone just fine. So i like, fuck it. Maybe I'll just change my password and we'll start all over again. So I change my password on the phone and get it all to work. It logs in. It works. Go to it. Emily tries again. Uh, we're working on two fucking phones here at this point and this app. And I'm literally like 25 minutes. I, at some point I'm like, can we just cast it from the phone to the TV? I'm prepared to do that. And then I'm like, no, nah, that's quitting. That, that's quitter behavior. I'm going to figure this out. And then like literally like 25 minutes into just me bitching nonstop to Emily about how this is so fucking stupid and it doesn't work. Emily looks at it and she goes, what password are you typing in? And I go, my fucking HBO password. And she goes, it says it wants your Apple ID password. I think it's asking for permission for you to install the app, not log into the app, you idiot. And uh, and then I spent the next 15 minutes trying to figure out what my stupid Apple ID password was. And then I did. Oh. And then it fucking worked. 
I spent over 30 minutes trying to watch Succession last night because I'm stupid. I'm a hundred percent dumb. And then today, <laughs> I plug in this fucking SD card into Millie's camera. I had to borrow her camera, and it won't format the card. And it keeps telling me that it can't capture it to the card. It needs to be formatted. And I keep going to format it, and it won't format it. It won't format it. And I'm getting mad, and I'm yelling at it. And I'm like, Millie, your fucking camera doesn't work. And Millie's looking at it, and she goes, hold on. And then she's like, we reseat the card, and we go through a bunch of times. And then she takes it out, and she goes, there's no card in here. This is just like the sleeve. You're supposed to put the micro SD card in the... And I realized... That I I just oh. didn't take that out of the wrapper. I just took the fucking like the the thing out and just stuck that in. And there was no goddamn card in the whole time. <laughs> you plugged in an adapter. <laughs> I plugged in an adapter. And then I just shoved the fucking actual card like in a drawer somewhere. And I had to go find it. It's like plugging in a light to an extension cord and not plugging in the extension cord into the wall and going, what the fuck is wrong with this thing? Oh, yeah. it, the light bulb it was drawer. so long and Jeff was so so mad so mad i get mad so fast when stuff doesn't work now and it's always me it's never stuff's it's never stuff's fault i want someone from hbo to come by and clean up their shit that's two apps now that's hbo now and hbo that's three hbo go hbo max it's just dregs it's all gone though now right it's it, yeah, it's just Max. Oh, you just want somebody it? to come and delete it all for you? Yeah, stop leaving empty apps, you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're mad? You're mad that you still have it downloaded? That's what this outrage is about? No, it's just like it's leaving a bunch of mess. It's like kicking a bunch of trash through my front door. Just delete it. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not with <laughs> you. It's the I'm not least with you on that inconvenient one. thing in the world. Like, no way. What are you Gav talking about? No, Gavin, I'm, I'm with you. It's like, it's like having a party and somebody brings a bunch of stuff and then leaves a bunch of garbage yeah. at your house. You already made me switch to the new app like a year ago. What's wrong yep. with this one? Yep. I, yep. I will say I'm in no position to criticize apps for at least the next three weeks based on the stupidity of last night. I kind of wish you never would have figured it out and you were still mad at HBO. Dude, I was so <laughs> angry. And I'm like, why does it work on my phone? Why can I log in on my phone? It's the same password. That's amazing. And then... Yeah. Do you want to see an amazing coincidence? I would love yeah. to see. After the last episode, because we were talking about how Jeff and I <laughs> stayed in that uh, really romantic room in San Antonio, <laughs> it's, my phone <laughs> must have heard me because in my memories, this popped up. <laughs> oh my God. 2013. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if that was the time because I think I've been there a couple of times. I'm not sure if that was the exact time. Yeah, we've time. been there a few times for sure. Yeah, but uh, I just love that that popped up. That's perfect. Almost exactly 10 years ago. Yeah. I mean, if we were there June 13th, 2013, that would have been for an NBA Finals game. That would have been the Spurs versus the Heat. That was mm. probably the night that you dumped your drink down that lady's <laughs> shirt from behind. What? And then we saw her texting about some about some Heat, some idiot Heat fans that just dumped their drink on her. And she was going to get <laughs> she's about ready to turn around and slap the shit out of us for being annoying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, my, my first couple of years in this country were just uh, madness. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> just, Lon Stewart? No, just like, just, just drunk in public. <laughs> oh. I should have just calmed down a little bit. That day, we were walking out to go see Jason and Nick Saldana because they were at the game too. And I don't know if you remember this, but you bumped into a dude who ended up being <laughs> a fan and you spilled a drink all down him too. <laughs> <laughs> or like his dad I think it might have been his you're dad you're sure you weren't a character <laughs> no and, and this is and that was me trying to hold it together you were you were trying to hold it together uh, definitely trying definitely failing and you were just screaming you were just yelling Tottenham hot spurs chants the whole time yeah yeah come on you spurs yeah it but in the uh, in the football <laughs> chart it was pretty fucking funny yeah the, 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 I, I, apparently I knew Stuart a lot earlier than I realized <laughs> no I see Stuart mm. <laughs> Stuart, Stuart's never trying to hold it together. <laughs> 2013 Gavin was a bumbling fucker. That's for sure. <laughs> it's been a. I think we're in the the alter ego era. I mean, in the last few weeks, we've had Errol, Stuart, and Ram Scoop all all take on <laughs> personalities of their own. <laughs> do we know? Do we know what Ram Scoop does outside of scoop ice cream with a glove? Well, I, think, I think that's definitely our foundation, and then we'll build out from there. Okay. Well, that's the starting point. Eric wants to be in a new era right now. He wants to be in the summer of 98. He wants it to be the oh. face summer of 98. I've been 
I don't know what it is, but like 1998 in my head is like, man, what a cool summer that was. I, we were, we were at laser tag and Millie won a bunch of tickets and it was like, oh, what should I get? And they had those hats. Those like Dr. Seuss looking hats. You know what I'm talking like about? The cat in the hat. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. 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 Like that big, they had like that big hat and she's like, oh, I'm going to get, she got one. And then I got jealous and I got one. <laughs> <laughs> And I just kept going like the last time you could wear this like was in 1998 and you would listen to 311 and you were like the coolest guy ever. And then today we had Diet Coke and I don't think I've had a Diet Coke since and I said summer of 98 and then (laughs) Jeff said face summer of 98 and then went oh and then wrote it down. I don't know what it I'm I'm back 98. That's it. I think we got to do summer of 98 this summer. Let's figure that out. I'm in. 2023 yeah. is the summer of 98. <laughs> I just I, that. The idea of an event <laughs> seasonal summer of 98. <laughs> and also with our age gap is very different. Our yeah. summer of 98 <laughs> collectively are very different experiences. I'm four. We were talking about that because I was 12. And so like listening to the radio, trying to learn how to do a kickflip, wearing one of those hats and drinking a Diet Coke like that was it was awesome going to Belmont Park. And it was just it was great. And then Emily went, Jeff, how old are you in the summer of 98? And then Jeff, you say 23. I was as the, I was like 98 summer 98. That's when I got out of the army. I had just done my yeah, like five <laughs> years in the army. Yeah. From Kuwait I was 23. I just turned 23 years old. <laughs> and what Which, were you doing in the summer of 98 i was on i was on tour with a ska punk band <laughs> my body was catching up to my head was summer of 98 <laughs> based on that baby photo like i think i probably just got the balance right you were building the calf strength to hold your head up <laughs> and i think when i was 23 i was uh sp- spilling beer on people at bus <laughs> <laughs> oh oh I, I probably have footage of me in the summer of 98 i should try and find it this ties into another idea. We should talk about this after the show. Okay. I'm excited about this. Summer of 98. I'm excited too because Eric was saying like we should listen to, we should really get into music from 98. Maybe have like watch a movie from 98 together. Like what yeah. was popular in 98? That would have been like, I know what you did last summer maybe. Like somewhere around that era. Ooh. It was a good movie. I never saw that one. Really? It's a, a weird gap in my, yeah, I've seen like. I took Millie to see it in the theater a couple years ago. It still holds up? It's still good? Yeah, it was awesome. How many of those are there? There are like five at this point? I've only seen the first one. Oh. Round. Oh, Rush Hour came out in 98. Oh, really? Wow. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. You've got Mail. Ooh, Fallen. That was a great movie. Uh, Ooh, I think the thing that I remember was a radio station called Star 100.7 in San Diego had a thing called, I think it was called Whirl Till You Hurl, and it was... Uh, these like eight people on this old roller coaster that would like, you know, you just keep riding it in the winter, you know, who can ride it like the longest wins a car or whatever. And they thought it would, (laughs) they thought it would go on for like two days or whatever. They wrote it 18,000 times. Oh Oh my God. Oh my God. (laughs) 18,000. It's, it was like, it was insane. It was insane. It just kept going and going. It was like all summer long. I just remember oh, it going man. all summer long. It was so cool. That's like super fan Jack stuff. That was somebody summer 98 was just riding that <laughs> ride. That was the entirety of it. That's crazy. Trying to puke. <laughs> I like the idea of somebody wanting to like get out of it by vomiting, but they can't. They're just <laughs> stuck. They hate the experience. That's a ridiculous. God. Contest. When I was 18, I went to I was, I was in the army my best friend at the time, he was stationed in Germany. Like we had gone through journalism school together and then he'd got had been stationed in Germany and I was in Texas and he was married uh, to another soldier and they lived in Heidelberg. And so I went on vacation. I spent a month uh, with him. Uh, I've probably told stories in the past about how the wheels broke on my plane and we got stranded in Iceland for five days and I was briefly a wall and it was a whole thing. Uh, I think I've told those stories in like old RT podcasts or whatever. But the month that we were there, they had like a summer festival. And so we went to it. And it was kind of like this, like a state fair kind of thing. And they had uh, like shitty carnival rides that, that you know, some guy comes in with, with a lot of bad tattoos and he, he sets up in one night. And then you just pray that they don't fall apart while you're on it, you know. And there was like a little roller coaster like mm-hmm. that. 
and we got on it and his wife got really sick. And every time we'd go around this one curve, she would throw up like in her lap and we were <laughs> stuck on the roller coaster. Right. We couldn't oh, we couldn't man. get off. And so she threw up like eight times. Right. And she was laughing about it the whole time. We were all like 18, 19. It was like it, it, it wasn't fun to throw up, but we were it was so ludicrous. We were kind of laughing about it. She's like, I'm not going to throw I did it again. You know, but then God. we got off and we were like. I guess we should go home and clean you up. And I was like, it's kind of a shame because I bet people are going to sit in that puke. And then we were like, and she was like, you know what? That You're right. Let's stick around. And so we, while she was covered in puke for a little while, we stood and watched people go in, get into the thing, sit down in her puke, go, oh, oh. God, and get up and leave. Oh. And we watched probably like 10 oh. people sit in her puke. And she- oh. <laughs> oh, God. And that's my story. God. Oh. <laughs> That would ruin my day. Ruined a lot of people's day that day. Yeah. It was night. Ruined a lot of nights. Oh, that makes it even worse. I had uh, the opposite of my day being ruined. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh-huh. Finally happened. Hey! Cosmic Chris Fallen. They, they, they accept your existence. They acknowledge that you're real. Happy birthday, buddy. Hell yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, it was the day after my birthday. They're so wonderful. Not only are they not only are they are, are they a great apple, but their PR team was like defending us in comments on Twitter. I thought that was very cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very funny. What did you do something that like did they engage with a tweet or something of yours or was it random? No, I don't really even tweet. Yeah. That's great. The fact that they just randomly did that. Yeah. I wonder what made them turn. <laughs> I wonder if it's the Ram Scoop thing. Yeah, I don't <laughs> they know. Can get behind Ram Scoop. <laughs> And then they'll unfollow after listening to what Ram Scoop does. It was a very short lived <laughs> them being into it. I think I'm gonna work on a on a prototype for the the ice cream gloves. I think I can get that done. And and it'll be my second glove for face. <laughs> Maybe you're like the glove master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm hands man. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't I didn't think about us having like areas of expertise, but that makes a lot of sense. If you had to be an expert on a different part of the body, what would it be? Ooh. Oh. Andrew's the back man, obviously. Yeah, it has to be. Like I was, it's definitely not head. <laughs> it's either the back or ankles, and I feel a lot better about my ankles, but I probably know or my, my back, but I know more about my ankles, I'd say. What do you mean? Well, I've I've had to like I, I deal with my ankles more than I do my back. My back is perfect. It's oh, I maybe know. <laughs> I got an unbreakable nose. That might be my expertise. I think we need a diagram of the human body, and then we have to like color code which parts that we're we're the expert. Because you you've got so many. You've got back, ankles, and nose. Yeah, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of of distance. There's a lot of gray between those spots. I got like very bright ankles, very bright back, completely like fucking Rudolph level of nose. (laughs) And then everything else is pretty, pretty blank, I would say. I would only I think I only I I would pick mouth, I guess, because I've spent a lot of time medically dealing with my mouth. Uh, But you have nose flaps and I I do have nose forces you. I do. have, But we haven't we haven't tested we haven't tested the efficacy of the nose flap yet. We're Why are we doing to do that? that? As soon as we get the strom strom. At the time of this recording, I believe it's next week, which <gasps> if you're listening to this, this will come out. Nick, this comes out the week of like the 29th, right? Uh, and now you No, this comes out the week of the 5th. This comes out the week of the 5th? Yeah. Then we've already done it. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. There you go. So, That's Jeff, what do you think? Expertise? Yes or no? Yes. <sighs> okay. We get, okay, so the 5th, it comes out on the 5th? It comes Just out on the 6th. The 6th, okay. That's uh, our birthday. It was three, three days prior <gasps> to this. Yeah, the June our 3rd, show right? birthday. Our Aaron, yeah, June 3rd. Happy birthday, guys. Happy oh. birthday to us. What, what season does that put us in? Are we still in season 6? I don't know. We're year 3 now. I guess the start of year three. I'm not sure about the season. Thing. Uh, the last time we were we we fucked with seasons, we were in season six. But I feel like this is I don't know. This is like summer of I don't know that like we're in summer season. We're in summer of season 98. 98? Season, yeah, season oh. 98. I feel like it's <laughs> we're going, we're going straight to 98 from six. Yeah, we got like it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, 98. Then we'll hit seven somewhere in the fall. 
I think that's fun. Let the people decide where the other season started and ended. Just know that we're now on 98. Yeah, we're season 98. Summer, summer season 98. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah, I think that fits. I think that fits. Yeah. I have a question for you, Jeff, just because um, your fiance works in the hair industry. Yeah. What is, what, what is the, sec- the second pair of scissors used? That just pulls all my hair out. What is that for? Oh, okay. I'm getting a haircut. There's just normal scissors. Chop, chop, chop. Oh, let me use these other scissors that yeah. just hurt. What is that doing? The dullest scissors ever made. Okay. I never understood that. Is it uh, meant to rip my hair out? I I would imagine not. Um, I don't fucking know because I'm not a hair <laughs> expert. She is. Yeah. <laughs> but she's also not here right now, so I can't ask okay. her. But I'll have to put a pin in that. I'll get back to you on it. I would love um, to. Know. I will say that Emily cuts my hair, and uh, she's been cutting my hair for you know five six years now, and I have never felt pain from her cutting my hair. It's never hurt. Huh. So it's it might be sh- the bulk out shitty. Yeah. It might be that you're getting your hair cut for fifteen dollars somewhere, <laughs> and they have dull scissors. <laughs> I, I want to say, uh, nature and time is taking the bulk out. I don't need a special <laughs> pair of scissors <laughs> to be it's doing so, any it's thinning. It's so it layers and it can sit differently on your head. I do. I, just, I will <laughs> say. I will say. I do remember when I was gluing your ha- head hair all over my face. Um, <laughs> that I remember being very thick and straw like your hair. Uh, it pretty coarse. Yeah, pretty coarse. So, well, I mean, that was nothing. Un- <laughs> Wait, what was you? I had your beard, didn't I? Mm-hmm. I had no. You had my pubes on your as a mohawk or something. How did that work? Uh, I thought it was your. I thought I had. A I mohawk had your. Of your I beard. had your. Yeah, that was it. You had a mohawk in my beard. I had a head. I had your head hair yeah. on my beard. I replaced my beard with your head hair. We saw truth for a moment. You thought it was beard hair this entire time. Uh, Jeff has been presenting this as beard hair. <laughs> We just saw a glimmer of truth. <laughs> the real adjustment. Back, that was back, funny. When, back when we were young and dumb. Eric and I came up with a game. Ooh. Okay. Okay. We were opening cards yesterday on the break show uh, <laughs> that we would like to do more often than once. We will. We will do it more often. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, okay. Anyway, we were doing it yesterday uh, for the, to celebrate the launch of the vinyl. And uh-huh. uh, how did that go? Uh, great. The vinyl <laughs> unmitigated success. We sold it. It sold out very fast, way faster than I think either of us thought it would. We were, t- we were, we can listen. We can cover that shit in a sausage talk if you want to. Okay. I have lots. I have notes written down for it. Uh, it seemed to, to be a it. phenomenal response to the point where even Andrew didn't get one. I missed out. Wes Ellis was in, was in while we were recording. We had four on the wall and it was mine, yours, Andrews and Nick's Eric already, Eric already has his but so That's we right. only had four copies in Rooster Teeth and Wes Ellis and a bunch of other people were like I really want one of those can I get one of those and they were like hovering around and we had to protect them we had to be like no these are <laughs> our copies we like and I was gonna give him my personal one but I thought I might still need it for for stuff like for yeah. set stuff so I'm gonna hold on to it um, but yeah, it was like people in the company were like clamoring to get it which is wild because That's crazy it's for a, a medium that almost no one can play uh, f- <laughs> for an episode that's not special in any way and that is publicly available in a better quality format for free uh, and longer and right? longer and longer, <laughs> yeah, and at the appropriate speed. Um, but yeah, it was a phenomenal response. And obviously we're getting we're getting some more. Re- we're, we're getting it repressed and I probably shouldn't say it, but this will be in the future. So I think it'll we're looking for it to launch sometime. I think we're going to get it sometime in September. So we'll communicate that when it comes out. And, the second uh, pressing. The, the second pressing. We're printing another 500, and then that's it. We're moving on from this bit. I saw some of the, the best outrage, because um, obviously people are sad they didn't get it, but also... Uh-huh, I totally get that. They're face regulation listeners, so they're very much in on the joke and <laughs> yeah. funny, and be, I saw one comment saying, I had it. I had it, and I had it, had it in my car, and it was scrumped from my car. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the idea. <laughs> Even through annoyance, there's still... That's still a part of it. We're gonna do our damnedest to get uh to get to unscrump that for people. Yeah. Um and also just so you know, we also ordered more no scrumping signs and more Falcon signs. Oh, awesome. Which by the way, I still can't believe that Falcon sign sold out as quickly as it did. I really didn't think that, that <laughs> bit had <laughs> did it. It sold out faster than the no scrumping sign. 
which I think was a way stronger <laughs> bit. Um, yeah, was it was it ridiculous. Volume thing? There we, were there like six Falcon signs? Yeah, there were six Falcon <laughs> signs. I think there were 500. You, you get, first of all, that was so much fucking tone when we're selling 10 of one type of Gerpler. You acted like <laughs> that was selling 10 of a Gerpler. We're get, no, 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 no. That's a bonus no, Gerpler. 10, no, there's 10 <laughs> We're selling ones. a there's thousand ten and of 10. 10 of them are special. <laughs> yeah, but there's only 10 of them. So I'm just saying six isn't a ridiculous statement. That feels if totally there were, doesn't, I, Why even argue it? Why even argue it? No, doesn't no, why, even matter. Why didn't you argue with him? I don't want to. It does, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's for this show, completely appropriate. Uh, this is not an, uh, an arena Eric wants to argue in right now. He's, I think we made 100 signs. I went low. I went comedically low, but I still think 100 seems incredibly low for the signage. We, we made. We did 100. We did more. It we did, we made. It doesn't matter. Are you talking about the Falcon signs? We made the five. Yes. Sign. We made 500 Falcon signs. There are 500 Falcon that signs? That's crazy. I and like I also didn't get one. That's the. I think that's the only piece of merch I don't have. Shout out to the audience. I think we're going to have to bump our limited run number. We're definitely going to bump our... It's complicated. It's not as easy as you would think. Uh, we'll definitely not be doing pre-orders for a lot of legal reasons. I've been down that road before. Uh, anyway, all that stuff can be covered in a sausage talk because I, I took copious notes to kind of explain the theory behind it all and why we do things the way we do. Uh, the point is, we were doing the break show yesterday and we were opening up these music cards. We've opened them up before. They're kind of dog shit. But I had landed on an idea that made it funny to me. And then Eric took that idea and ran with it and made it way better. And we were thinking, we were just opening up these cards and it's like one, one card will be Belle Biv DeVoe. The next one will be Testament. The next is Patsy Klein. The next <laughs> is like uh, the Scorpions. And it's just like musician after musician all over, all across the map, right? And it's like Patty LaBelle. And you're like, okay. Uh <laughs> Eric was thinking we should do it or we should do a thing where we all get together and we each open like three packs and from those three packs we get to make the best playlist we can on Spotify you get to pick like 10 songs from like the okay. 30 cards and you have to make the best playlist and then we compete against each other and we release them all make like a face Spotify we have like Eric's playlist Gavin's Jeff's Nick's mm. the other one Eric, Andrew and then and then the audience can vote on who has the best playlist and does it work like a draft? Like we can't have the same songs? Uh, yeah, well, because we oh. might get the same, like we might both yeah. get Def Leppard, right? Or Nelson. And so to, to me, yeah, we can't have the same yeah. songs. So I think we'd have to go in order, but I think it would also have to be sort of a like behind closed doors where we're trying to like put it together and then bringing it. And if we both have the same song, okay. there has to be like some kind of argument about it or we have to... Somebody has to drop it. There, there's, there's. How about this sort of gray area in the rules? How about I think this? Something there. If there's a like, say you both picked like Nelson, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> uh, I only bring that up because they were they came up yesterday, uh, yes. and it's like good luck trying to figure out what the best Nelson song is to put on a fucking right. comp. Uh, but if you both show up with Nelson, then you have to paper rock scissors. Oh, yeah. that's good. Keeping it easy. Yeah. Proper scissors, not the like the shitty ones that Gavin was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dull ass scissors. Not hair thinning scissors. <laughs> Gavin never throws scissors because they suck. They're terrible. It's got the dull scissors. Uh, anyway, and then so we then we have we basically create like a game out of it, uh, and then we release the playlist, and then the audience can pick what the best playlist is. I love it. I like it too. I think it's. I think I, it's really like good. the cards are so crazy. The stuff that you pull is not like. We ended up getting a Cro-Mags card, and that is like the most aggro fucking band. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, why do they have a card? Non-commercial. Not in any yeah. way. Not like doesn't make any sense that they would make the, the cut. <laughs> it's crazy. It's you think crazy. that that's their rookie card? You think it's a Cro-Mags rookie, or is there something prior to that? They were deep in the into the band at that point. I I told Eric a fucking story about Harley Flanagan, the guy in the Cro-Mags, that I won't bother telling on the podcast, but it's just an insane, insane story of a time of of, of a day I met him. Did the Meat Men show up? <laughs> no, the Meat Men were nowhere to be found. Oh, okay. Although I have seen the Meat Men play before. Uh, maybe they'll have a card. And then maybe you can add them. Uh, <laughs> like you can add one down, three to go, which is a song about the Beatles. Oh, man. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that dude get annoyed. I saw that dude beating people up in a riot once that I was a part of. <laughs> <laughs> it was the scariest, maybe one of the scariest days of my life. I saw, somebody, uh, I saw somebody kick him so hard in the face, I thought it killed him. <laughs> <laughs> the Chromex guy? Yeah. 
That's uh, I don't want to know anything else about them. I saw him. I saw him. I saw him rip a board off of the exterior wall of a store and then start beating people with it. (laughs) (laughs) That checks from his trading card. Yeah. Yeah. His eyebrows just look look like a V. Like he is pissed. (laughs) He is really mad. He looks like a character in those bad dudes cards we opened up. He does. (laughs) Like snotty, like Harley snot face or something, you know, or like, yeah. (laughs) He looks Cro Magnon. He kind of does. He kind of does. Yes, a hundred percent. It's crazy. Well, are we done? I think we're done. <laughs> I think yeah, we're it feels these, like right? we're done. Yeah, we got to do another one right after this. It feels like we did enough. Oh, can I? Uh, you know, a little addition. Just uh, bring that up. Uh, <laughs> is that who he looks like? Oh. <laughs> who is that? That's that? Is that a Dragon Ball guy? Yeah, Vegeta. <laughs> Vegeta. I just before we close out, a little uh, went to the chat. Hundred signs, hundred signs. Oh, may is that wrong. all it was? No way. Oh, they may have, they may have bumped it later, but that's what was listed. Hundred signs. Oh so, wow, Andrew yeah, going back did. for the receipts. That's, that's awesome. Definitely not what I remember. I, that's not I, what I, I remember either. Meetings. No. Now I know why Eric didn't want to argue. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I was gonna argue that it was the, about the cups. I was gonna argue about the cups. Oh. Know. Well, oh, now you need the signs are done. We'll have to go back and look. I think that there were. I, I do think that there were more ordered than that. But you, you're right. It does say hundred. I mean, it's loose, loose. I mean, when you're ordering <laughs> Falcon signs out, <laughs> everything is lose, lose, dude. How do, you, how do you I know? I really like the idea self. that the like the people ordering the numbers for this have no context for where this is coming from, and just as a normal human being trying to decide how many people want to beware Falcon sign, how yeah. many people want this? A hundred seems excessive. How many people want a two-year-old? middle episode of a podcast with eight minutes like, well out. it's like we were right <laughs> and or like you know you you make something like a skateboard a vck skateboard that you're really excited about that makes a lot of sense and you actually get it out pretty pretty quickly and then people didn't buy it and you see you're like well, i don't know if i can take a risk on something as dumb as a falcon sign if nobody buys the skateboard <laughs> which seems like a fucking home I, run. Lo- I love the fact that we can <laughs> We can sell Falcon security signs, but not skateboards. <laughs> it's just like we ended up selling the skateboards, and the people were like, yeah. "Oh man, I didn't get one. Bring them back!" And it's like you didn't. Oh, they were available it forever. It's the same way with the with the tiki mugs. People are like, "You guys, we sold. We ordered a thousand of those tiki mugs. We sold like eight hundred pretty quickly, and then we had two hundred sitting on the shelves, costing us money for. It felt like three months after that, but it might have been a little longer." <laughs> It's like, it's such a delicate, it's such a delicate thing. I love it. And I love all the discussions that it causes internally. And none of it, when read, seems like it should be business or work just because it's so absurd. But it's all actual real people doing their real jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the best. Uh, it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the face podcast it was the 157th time we've all sat down at our respective desks and and uh, hashed out a little argument a little conversation a little bit of friendship a little bit of kinship a little bit of love and we hope you enjoyed it as well if you did maybe you'll tell somebody in your life that you love all about it we think they might like it if you just don't introduce them with this episode maybe go back three or four uh (laughs) unless you want to unless 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 they're into out of context in that case maybe this is an all-time great uh, also give us a review somewhere on a place that uh, allows reviews we would appreciate that if it's positive if it's negative keep your fucking opinions to yourself thank you very much we'll see you next week <laughs> hey guys Major League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. check out our whoop tone here comes Errol the gang invents more products it's Panton's Pie someone fried the caterpillar we get a mold update what kind of bird is that And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. Face.